Hey everyone, this is Max Nemestikov with the Sonya Sting. Hoping you guys are all staying safe and healthy. Just wanted to say I can't wait for the puck drop and play in front of everybody out there. Um, and this is Futures Watch. Today I am joined by Sarnia Sting, exciting up and comer Max Nemesnikov, the third overall choice at the 2020 OHL priority selection. Max, how's it going? How's life? Um, life's been good. Um, I mean, obviously it hasn't been the way I've, we all wanted it to go, but with this whole COVID thing, um, the only thing I can think about is just getting getting a Sarnia and start playing in front of all, my, all the fans there and but other than that, it's been, it's been all right. Yeah, we're definitely, definitely all hoping for, uh, for good news as time goes on. Is there anything interesting you've been doing to kind of keep busy? Have you picked up a new hobby or anything? I, before the weather got worse, I got into golfing. Um, but obviously snow came along and it's got cold outside. So I've been staying indoors. Um, well, actually, since it's got cold outside, I've been out skating on my lake, um, playing some hockey with some neighbors and just some family. So it's a nice way to stay active and stay social during these unprecedented times. Uh, well, thinking back to April, right, uh, right after you got chosen, I remember you said that you you wanted to go to Sarnia for a reason. Maybe you can tell us why. Um. There's a lot of reasons. I think they're all positives, and I just heard a lot of good things about Sarnia and how they develop their players to the next levels. And um, I've also looked at other players that went through that organization that came out to play in the NHL or the AHL, um, and those are all positive signs to me, and I've only heard anything but the positives. So. It's definitely a good uh, development program there. And uh, you were certainly looking forward to bonding with the team, getting to know the guys. Uh, I know you haven't really been able to met, meet in person, unfortunately, because of what's been going on. But maybe you can speak to how those relationships have started to form online and over Zoom over the past few months. Yeah, we've um, I've met some guys over like Snapchat, Instagram, uh, social media. And the other way I've talked to some guys are over Zoom. I think our team had over, uh, we have over like 10 Zoom calls that we've done together. So I've found um, ways to communicate with them through that. But um, other than that, I haven't gotten a chance to obviously go to Sarnia and meet any of them, but that's about it. Is there anyone in particular that you've kind of developed a close relationship? Anyone who's kind of taken it upon themselves to show you the ropes a little bit online? Um, I, I want to say the closest I got to is uh, Ben Ben Gaudreau, the goalie. Um, I think since day one, since I got drafted, we've uh, he did a nice job of making me feel, like feel comfortable and welcome to the team. And just uh, since that, we've just always been communicating. So, well, speaking of close relationships, I mean. I think it's an understatement to say that hockey runs in your blood. Uh, there's your father, of course, of Genny, who played parts of five NHL seasons with the Canucks, the Islanders, the Predators, your brother, Vlad, uh, who, of course, is a former London Knights forward who moved on to an accomplished NHL career, now playing with the Detroit Red Wings, which is the former team of your uncle, Slava Kozlov, who helped them to a a pair of Stanley Cups over his decorated 18 season career. Um, then you have your other uncle, Ivan Novoselsev, who spent a pair of seasons uh, with the Sting as well before embarking on his own career. So, I mean, your family is a wealth of hockey talent all on its own. It's no wonder you're kind of following the same footsteps and have the same dream as them. Yeah. Um, each, each, each of the names you named off, I've been looking up to since I was since I came out of the wound, to be honest. Um, and hockey is, like you said, is just in the blood. Um, I think I threw on my first pair of skates when I was three or four-ish. Um, and yeah, just ever since that day, I've enjoyed hockey and loved it. Well, within the Sting organization lies another wealth of NHL talent and guys like David Legwan and Darian Hatcher, Brad Stobitz. How exciting is the opportunity to get to learn from guys like them? Yeah, like like you said, kind of what I was going back to. A lot of a lot of very good players went to that organization, 
and that's the one of the reasons why um, I'm going to play there myself. And um, yeah, just getting coached by David Legwand and Hatcher and and so so many more is just going to be an honor. And um, hopefully, it'll make me a better they'll make me a better player for the future. Definitely. And I mean, you said it yourself, you've kind of been surrounded by hockey since day one. You don't really know life without it. Uh, and I mean, you grew up watching your brother play in London, and I'm sure you treasure uh, some of those moments very much. And you were young, but are there any specific moments that kind of stand out when you look back to his junior career? Yeah, 100%. I remember um, We've always, my family and I, we've always stayed in Michigan. So we had to drive all the way to Canada for each of his home games to London, which we're about like a four hour drive, if not more. Um, but I remember going to a couple of his games with a big blow horn, like, and I remember it was green and I'd always just blow that, <laughs> like at his games. It was just the, that I always remember that sitting with my mom and I was very little at the time. So you can imagine just the mini max at the rink. That's definitely an old memory because I don't even think those are allowed anymore. Yeah, they, I don't think they are either. But I also remember going down to the locker room and just meeting all the players. And my brother giving me the, the tour of the locker room. And it was just special. So that definitely, I mean, had a, a great impact on the path you've chosen to take. So talking about your decision to come to the OHL, I mean, you had considered taking a different route. Uh, why was the OHL the best fit for you after all is said and done? Yeah, I, I've had, I had a couple options. I had the plan to go to college. Um, obviously both routes were very good. And like, like you said, I had family members that went through the organizations of Sarnia and my brother played in London. And um, I just heard, I think the OHL had more positives than college. So I think, I just let like the surroundings, how do I say this? Um, like all of the ideas around me pretty much chose my decision for me because there's more positives to the OHL, if that makes any sense. And what were some of those positives? I think in, I think I remember you mentioning like it's, the speed really stands out and that's kind of something you want to you wanna compete within, right? Yeah, just the speed and the skill levels, the... There are a lot of good players in the OHL with high IQ, um, good coaching staffs. Um, that's a lot of the big reason is why I went to the OHL is the coaching staff and just something that'll prepare me for the future. Well, speaking of players with high IQs, is there anyone you're kind of eyeing right now? Uh, someone you're you're really looking forward to getting to play against when the puck drops on the season? Oh. Uh, I've never really thought of that. Um, I don't know. I don't think I've ever really thought about that. I mean, there are a lot of good players. I'm excited to play against the London Knights because they have a they have a lot of good players. Um, I, I'm just excited to play against anybody, to be honest. Hey, that's that's a good answer all on its own. <laughs> yeah. So what's your overall excitement level right now with regards to hitting the ice with this particular group of players that you've, you've started to get to know? Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I've heard nothing but positive about our teams. We have a group, we have a great group of guys and um, I just can't wait to hit the ice with all of them. And I mean, you can't really meet as a group right now. We talked about that, but, you know, getting to know them over, over the past little while online, um, what has the communication been like with, with your teammates, with the coaching staff? Uh, how are you guys kind of making sure that you're staying hockey ready and kind of staying focused on what the game plan will be when the puck drops on this? Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, we've had 10, 10 or a couple like 10 or more zoom calls together as a team just probably like two two or three times a month just to stay close just to stay um just to say what's up sometimes or just to talk just to bond team bonding i think is important that's what we've been doing as a team and just staying in touch so you were touted as one of the most offensively gifted skaters uh, coming into the 2020 OHL draft. And your 151 point season definitely speaks for itself. Uh, 
But in your opinion, what stands out most about your game? Um, my skating stands out to me the most. Um, just using my speed to get around um, defensemen or forwards was is just the most important thing to me is my speed, my skating. And, you know, the Sting are coming off uh, a tougher season from last year. Uh, so to be a key piece of that that turnaround, how much do you look forward to that challenge? Yeah, I accept it. Um, I think we have a very, very talented young team right now. And I think the most important thing is everyone should come in with confidence. And I think that will be one of the keys is to – hopefully make the playoffs or whatever happens this season. Um, but yeah, I think as long as we all have confidence, I think we have the talent and the speed to, to perform good. What are the biggest steps you've been taking to prepare for your rookie season, both physically and mentally as well? Yeah. Um, earlier this summer, I had a surgery not too long ago. Um, a couple months back and ever since that I've been performing every day at the gym skating every day um, just putting on muscle mass and getting quicker um, to help me for the season so having already been through this process is there a piece of advice or something your brother has said to you that has really stuck out to you um, I think both my dad and my brother have both said, keep your head up um, as you grow older because guys are going to be taller than me, heavier than me, bigger than me, and they can easily end up your hockey career just like that with a snap of a finger. And so I think the most important thing that they told me is keep my head up. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to hit you with some quick questions uh, just to help everyone kind of get to know you a bit more. Uh, so let's see how quickly you can answer them, all right? All right. Perfect. All right. Tell us your nickname and the story behind it. Um, I've had a couple of nicknames. Uh, one that stuck with me is Nemo for short for Nemesnikov. Um, I think it's quick and simple as Nemo. And then my, the most used one is Maxi or Max, just plain and simple. What's your pregame meal? Uh, my pregame meal or since last game I played was – um, I you always had chicken and pasta, um, but I've noticed that it's been slowing me down. So I've just been ha I've been been eating homemade pasta. That's what I've been eating. So definitely a popular choice. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's your favorite minor hockey memory? Um, I think one that stuck with me is Pee Wee Quebec. Um, playing in front of thousands of people was just was a very very cool thing to do at like 13, 13 years old. What excites you most about living and playing in Sarnia? Um, just getting, getting to Sarnia and just getting out there in the community, meeting fans, meeting people, my teammates. Describe to us your pregame ritual, if you have one. Um, I have a couple. I have one that involves drinking a bottle of Pedialyte before a game. Um, it, I've noticed it just keeps me hydrated and I, my body just feels good on the ice. Um, and then I usually listen to the same playlist before every game. That's just, that's what I tend to do. Maybe you can kind of give us an insight into what that playlist looks like. What is your, what's your, what's your go-to starting song, I guess? Um, my playlist has a lot of EDM and like, be trapping songs that you know get you going um here and then it ends with rap um but just you can the edm you can kind of imagine yourself what goes on in there <laughs> definitely good pump up music right yeah 100 percent. well that leads me to my next question are you usually the guy with the aux cord in the locker room and do you get to play your edm music to kind of pump up the whole team um not exactly not in the past years i've just other people had played aux but they play similar music to mine so um yeah okay so you're all on the same page about that exactly hopefully that'll be the case going forward as well <laughs> yeah hopefully uh who's your favorite minor hockey coach um 
I wouldn't just pull one right out. I mean, I had, um, I don't know, I just had the blessing to have one of her coaches my whole hockey career. Um, hopefully, obviously in Sarnia, um, there are really good coaches waiting for me to play. Um, but I don't think I can just pull one right, right out. I think I enjoyed all my hockey career, hockey coaches throughout my career. Which road OHL arena are you most looking forward to playing? I'm excited to play the ones in the States, um, like Flint, Saginaw. Um, I think just because I'm going to have, hopefully, I don't know if we're going to have fans or not, but um, just family and friends are in Michigan. So that's the games. So those are the games where I'm going to have the most family and friends. At. So I think it'll be very exciting to play in front of them. Absolutely. All right. Um, in your words, describe yourself as a player. Um. I don't know if I can call myself a two-way player here or forward here, but I love playing in the D zone. I love helping the D out. I think that's most that's very important. I think defense comes before offense, so I help my D out in the defensive, do all that work, and then go score some goals. So, which NHL player do you model your game after? Um, I want to say my brother. I've always looked up to my brother. Um, there, there are a lot of NHL players that I look after and watch and um, watch them play, but I think I'm going to say my brother because I watch him the most and I study his game. Good answer. <laughs> All right, last question I have for you. Um, you were number 18 in Detroit. I think you'll be sporting 81 in Sarnia. Any significance behind those numbers? Yeah, so I've worn 18 my whole life and then getting drafted by – Sorry, yes, someone already took in number 18. So what I did was I was just, I'm just, I'm just, I just said, I'm just going to flip the numbers. So I went eight and one. Is there a reason behind, is there anything special about the number 18 or is kind of the number you were given as a kid and you just stuck with it the whole way? Yeah, my brother wore number 18 when he went to London. And I don't know why, but I just really got hooked on to the number. Um, just looking up to my brother, seeing him as, you know, I, just looking up to him, I was like, all right, 18, love, I love this sense, so. Definitely a good reason. Oh, well, perfect. That uh, wraps up our Futures Watch segment with the newest member of the Sarnia Sting, Max Nemesnikov. Max, thank you so much. Always appreciate your time. We're so excited to watch you play. Thank you for having me.